Hey, Backlog Cats, and today we're gonna have a double review. Introducing the HG1144 scale Crossbone Gundam X1, Full Cloth Type GPFT, and the P Bandai HG1144 scale Crossbone Gundam X0, Full Cloth, from the Mobile Suit Gundam Crossbone Manga series. Now that's a mouthful. So, for the sake of not having to record this for an unnecessary amount of retakes, We'll be calling this guy Skullheart and this guy Ghost, which are their nicknames in the manga. Actually, the kit I got for the Skullheart is the Gundam Build Fighter Strive version that featured this kit in the anime. That's just because I bought this when the full cloth was only available in this line before they released a P Bandai version, which is the original Skullheart from the manga. Just from the name itself, these are pirate themed Gundams, and if you're not convinced, just take a look at the skull and crossbones on the forehead and the chest. Anyway, let's go check them out. Starting off with the boxes, the skull heart I got is from the HG Build Fighters line. The reason why it has the type GBFT is because its colors are the ones seen in the Gundam Build Fighters Tri anime. We're just going to flash the box scans here, as there will be a lot to talk about these kits, so just hit pause if you want to take a look at them. And on the date of release, the list price for this kit is 2200 yen. Moving on to the ghost, as you can see, it is monochrome, which is the standard way of packaging for P Bandai kits. No list price indicated for this one, but it did come out at 2750 yen. Not bad of a difference, right? But you know it's gonna be more expensive outside of Japan. There's not gonna be a lot going on around the box, so let's just go ahead and check out the manuals. As you can see, the Build Fighters line does have a more colorful manual compared to the standard Universal Century line. Inside, you can see more about the kit and its loadout. However, I'm not quite sure why the camphor is listed there in the material gunpla, as this doesn't have any camphor part at all. By the way, if you're confused about the material gunpla bit, the Gundam Build Fighter anime is about gunpla, not Gundams. Basically, that universe is like our universe where gunpla is a thing and they can make them battle each other on a simulated battlefield, and a lot of the featured gunpla there are customs based off actual kits. Pretty fun watch just from seeing different customs of kits. Anyway, you can also see here in the manual that this comes with 14 runners in total. And on the back, you see the typical painted kit showcase, gimmicks, and color guide. Plus, some tips in detailing and a bit of an advert for the other kits in the line. Now for Ghost, nothing fancy here. No cover, no features, just straight up instructions on how to build this thing. Color guide doesn't even have colors. Anyway, this kit comes in with 18 runners and the wire. Both of these kits are based off on the original HG Crossbone Gundam X1, so you'll see these are mostly identical design-wise. So let's just take off the full cloth units for a while and just put them on later in the accessory section. They do include the cover for where you can slot the full cloth unit, since it is part of the base Crossbone Gundam X1, but there will be none for the coat on coat scarf part as they both use a new chest piece for the full cloth unit. So, the proportions of these kits are really nice and since this is a Kotoki design, it does have long legs. I especially like the pop color and the spikes on the ankle armor that contrast the rather simplistic overall design of the mobile suit. 
If you're not a fan of the pop colors, these kits does have the original part that just covers the Vulcans, which you can swap in. They're really snug in there once it's built, so I won't attempt to take it off in the risk of breaking anything. The kits are nicely detailed and will really benefit from applying some panel wash, especially the skulls and crossbones. The skull on the chest even has engraved teeth, and look at that detail on that one on the forehead. Bandai really does have next level casting technology. So you might have already noticed there are some differences between the two aside from obviously the color scheme. Starting at the V-fin, the skull heart is sporting the original X1 antenna, while the ghost has a new one with a narrower angle and a flatter design. The skull heart has a steel feather at the left part of his head, while the ghost does not. It is included in the box though. And lastly, the back skirt of the ghost is wider compared to the skull heart. Very minor differences, but the v fins really do set their looks apart. A great thing about these kits is that there aren't really much seam lines and you really have to look closely to spot them. Now moving on to the color scheme, as you can see, the skull heart is more akin to the traditional Gundam colors, which are white, blue, and red. For this version, you do have a pearlescent finish which I'm honestly not the biggest fan of. However, I do really like how the dark blue turned out and especially the red parts that really pops out. There will be parts here and there that will need some painting for the base kit, but out of the box it already does look nice. I especially like the color separation in the forearm over there, with the grey plastic sandwiched between the red and pearlescent white. Now onto the ghost, as you can see. It does sport more of a metallic gray look with some red details. This is due to the mobile suit is supposedly coated with silver anti-beam coating. Just like the Yakushiki and the Akatsuki Gundam has a gold anti-beam coating, making their color scheme gold. But you know, they made this metallic gray instead. Hmm, I wonder what it would look like if you painted this in plated silver. Anyway, if you look closely, there are two tones of metallic gray over here. The dark blue parts from the skull heart are in a cooler tone, while the pearlescent white has a warmer tone of metallic gray. Very subtle difference between the tones but it does look really nice in person. What I really like most about the color scheme is the metallic red which looks similar to those seen in titanium finish kits. It just looks so good in person. They both have a sticker sheet, and man, what a sticker sheet. Although this looks really horrible to look at, most of the stickers here are going to be in the full clap unit, leaving a small portion for the base kit. Personally, I won't be putting them on mine, but I'll quickly show the parts that need stickering. For both, the circle details in the shoulders, Vulcans in the torso, tip of the knee armor, and the rectangular details on the thrusters. For the skull heart, the upper half of the steel feather, inside of the collars, and the buckle detail on the shoulders. For the ghost, the frosty tips for the V-fin and the red piece in the crotch armor. But honestly, it would be a shame to cover the red piece. So for the full cloth unit, the thin red stickers will go to the crevices on the cloak. The large chunk of grey goes to whatever has the same shape on the unit. The circle grey stickers goes to the eyes in the skulls, and the yellow stickers goes to the thruster bits on the end of the panels. So yeah, color accuracy is really not these kit's strong point, but it really is not that hard to detail paint this kit, as the details that need painting are not very small. You can see in the skull heart's full cloth unit, I put some red metallic markers there instead, and it really turned out great in my opinion. Now, if only I had time to really work on and detail up my kits. Now let's go take a look at the accessories, and as you can see, these two can be armed to the teeth. And speaking of teeth, both of them have a swappable faceplate that you can change with the open face version, looking like they're opening their mouths. To swap them, you could just simply pull the helmet and switch the faceplates. So the in-universe reason why the crossbone Gundams open their mouths is to release heat which will enable them to boost their performance. Talk about burying your teeth, am I right? Moving on, let's take a look first at the hand options. Both kits will be having your usual holding hands, a tilted right holding hand, 
and two hands made specifically to hold the Buster gun. The tilted holding hand is tilted outwards, so you can have them hold the weapons that has a design that gets in the way of the arms. We'll get into those in a bit when we go through the weapons. But it would have been great if we had two, so we can interchange where those specific weapons go since these kits do come in a lot of firepower. Anyway, the Buster Gun holding hands are, well, made for holding the Buster Gun. It has a rectangular peg that slots snugly into the weapon as you can see here. It does make a sort of pointing gesture when you don't have the gun attached to it, which is nice for doing those badass anime protagonist poses. While we're here, let's take a look at the Buster Gun. So this gun has a nice blunderbuss design which fits quite well with the pirate theme of these mobile suits. This also has a peg in the side so you can attach it to the side skirt. It is lacking in color separation, which you'll see also in the other weapons. But yeah, it's already established at this point that you'll need to detail paint these kits to get the most out of it aesthetically. To complete the pirate weapon set, we also have a cutlass to pair with your blunderbuss. The beam zamber is one of the more unique melee weapons in the Gundam universe. With the hilt having a nice looking handguard, and the beam effect part having the cutlass blade shape. Which is kind of wild considering Gundam Crossbone is part of the Universal Century timeline that has a more realistic design approach to the mobile suits. This also has a peg on the side so you could also store it on the side skirt. Now, the beam zamber and the buster gun can be combined into a more powerful rifle called the Zan Buster. And this is where the tilted hand comes into play. As you can see, the handguard obstructs the ball joint that will connect to the hand to the forearm and just basically makes it impossible to attach. Personally, I'm not a fan of the tilt as it does look awkward to pose it with the weapon, but you make do with what you have. The Zan Buster's rifle design really is unique as it does sport that Victorian era vibe, but the lack of color separation does hurt its looks overall. Next we have a pair of beam sabers which you can't really store anywhere and it's pretty basic but it's nice to have them anyway. Adding more to the melee arsenal of the crossbone are a pair of heat daggers which you can attach to the holding hands. It's always really cool when kits have daggers for some CQC action. And what might be cooler than daggers you say? Why daggers on the feet of course! And yes, there are also heat daggers. Simply plug them in the bottom of the feet and you're good to go. Next up is the awesome looking beam crossbow named Peacock Smasher. Why is it called the Peacock Smasher you say? No idea. Looks pretty cool though. Again, not color accurate at all, but it does look fine only having one color. Looking at the technical design, I don't think this would be the most accurate gun at all, but hey, it's a beam crossbow, which is awesome. Now for the ghost, this is just an optional weapon. Even the manual said build it if you like. This also goes for the Muramasa Blaster, which is part of the Skull Hearts loadout. So the Muramasa Blaster is a really weird looking weapon that has a sword and a gun mode. For the sword mode, you can replace the tip with this long beam effect part and then mount these crazy looking beam effect parts on the side to make this abomination of a sword. When I saw this, the first thing that came into my mind was, what the f and the weapons that the ancient Aztecs used which was a club embedded with obsidian blades on the side. So for the gun mode, simply put the tip back on and that will serve as the barrel of the gun. And then attach the tilted hand over to the grip in the guard. Again, not color accurate at all and a bit of painting is recommended for the details. Oh and both the Muramasa Blaster and Peacock Smasher can be mounted on the side skirts. Now. The previous two weapons are optional for the ghost, because the ghost actually has a weapon that combines the functionality of the two and it is called the Kujaku. The Kujaku is a transformable weapon that can transform between the buster and the smasher mode. The buster mode basically is the Muramasa blaster that can hold the same wild effect parts and can be equipped the same way, while the smasher mode is basically the peacock smasher. To change this to the smasher mode, there will be a bit of parts forming. You take off the stock, put this part on, attach it back to the hilt and twist. And yes, you can still attach the effect parts. It still has the problem of being in one color again like the other weapons, but it does look fine in all white. 
A neat little trivia here is that the name Kujaku is literally peacock just in Japanese. Very clever Bandai. Now let's take a look at what makes them both full cloth, which is the full cloth unit. These can be attached on the shoulders, just remove the parts on top and then plug them in. These kits really do look more awesome when these are on. There's just something about kits with cloaks that make them look 10 times more badass. It does hinder the articulation a bit as they tend to clash with other parts, but each plate is mounted on a ball joint, allowing them to move out and about. The skulls on each side are eye field generators, which are used as protection against beam attacks. That's cool and all, but the best feature of these is that they can be mounted onto the fist, so your crossbone can have skull fists. Yes, skull fists are a thing in Universal Century. One thing to note about the full cloth unit is that the ghost and skull heart have slightly different full cloth units. As you can see, the last panel of the unit extends all the way to meet the other panels for the ghost, while the skull hearts doesn't go all the way. That's also true for the sort of scarf panel connected to the chest. Honestly, you won't really notice it at all. I've had to really look closely to find out what's the difference. But if you prefer the Skull Hearts full plot unit, Bandai included that in the box for Ghost. Next up, we take a look at the pair of effect parts for the brand marker, which the Ghost does not have. These can be attached to the plates in the forearm that can go over the fist and make a sort of katar or push knife weapon. Be careful not to break anything when taking off the plate, as it is a bit hard to take off. It also comes with a beam shield which you can just swap in. But personally, I'm not really a fan of how it looks. Since both kits are crossbones, both effect parts can be used by the ghost. Now onto the weapons that I think is the selling point of the crossbone Gundam Ghost, the shotguns known as the Butterfly Busters. There are two versions of this, the normal Butterfly Buster which was included in the non-full cloth version, and the Butterfly Buster B which is exclusive to this specific model kit. As you can see, the normal ones have the rugged aesthetic, while the newer one has a sleeker design. I feel like this one's a slug shotgun. If you're wondering why these are called butterfly busters, well I actually have an answer for you. It's because they fold and become crazy beam savers like a butterfly knife. Well not really fold, you have to parts form it a bit, but it's still pretty awesome. And just look at the size of the effect part. Shotgun swords, need I say more? Since you have 3 of these, you can share this with your other crossbones or any kit really. It's not like you can fit all the weapons of these guys anyway. Aside from those, this kit also comes with the scissor anchors. You can swap the front skirts with these connection points that will hold the solid copper wire that this kit comes with, which then attaches to the scissor anchors. You can't be a pirate if you don't hijack those ships for loot. And finally, both of these kits include the core fighter, which you can attach the boosters on the rear. It's always so nice when they include the core fighter of the mobile suit. Even with all the other weapons and accessories, this is a really nice touch. So yeah, these two are packed to the brim with accessories. Dare I say even more than you would ever need, which is great as you'll have so many options on how you can display and pose your kit. The only downside is that they are color inaccurate. But that is again to be expected from an HG kit, especially since the crossbone Gundams are smaller than your average Gunpla. But for just the amount of options you can do with these is a bang for your buck. Accessories 11 out of 10. Since they're technically the same kit, let's take a look at just one of them. Starting off, the head is on the ball joint and can move up and down like so. The Vulcans will hinder it a bit from side to side but still has some decent range. The scarves can move up, resembling your typical front skirt. Bit of articulation in the core and waist can do the full 360. The thrusters on the backpack are connected on the ball jointed part so they can move about individually. Thruster bells can be oriented perpendicularly since it's just held by friction. The joint part holding the thrusters is on a peg, so it can rotate a full 360. Shoulders can move forward and is on a ball joint. Arms can move around even with the full cloth on. The binders are in a ball joint, so can be moved out to expose the arms. 
the teeth of the skulls can move to make way for the arms. If you take out the full cloth, you can see that it does only hinder the range by just a bit. Bicep swivel over here, and the arm has a nice double joint. Hands are on a typical ball joint. Front skirts can move out, but you'll have to get the scarf out of the way. Side skirts can move a bit. Legs can kick all the way front, but not to the back. It can pull off the splits, but is hindered a bit by the side skirts. The joints in the hip can tilt, allowing more range in one of the legs' kicks. Thigh swivel over here, and a double joint in the knees with an almost full blend. Ankle armor is connected by a ball joint. Feet can go up and down, and it's also on a ball joint. So overall, the articulation is fantastic. Even if you have the full cloth unit on, it will only hinder it a bit as they do have articulations on their own. Downside is, with so much going on with this kit, it tends to get finicky when handling it. But the kits overall are solid enough that it doesn't fall apart all the time. Now time to compare these guys with your average size Gundam, and you could tell they're really lacking in the size department. This is because Crossbone Gundam was set in a time where people eventually found a way to develop more efficient power sources, removing the need for bigger and bulkier reactors. Now compared to the narrative over here, head height reaches just about the chest, making the narrative look pretty dominant. So yeah, they're on the smaller side of the spectrum. So overall, if you're really a big fan of kits having an ungodly amount of accessories, definitely pick one of these up as this will be right up your alley. Combined with superb articulation, these kits will be a treat for posing and taking photos off. The design is really cool and makes them look like total badasses. It's just that their size diminishes the badass factor a bit in my opinion. The real downside of this kit is it just needs more love when it comes to the color separation. But I won't really call that a downside, especially if you're a fan of detail painting your kits, as these definitely gives you a lot of opportunities. Sadly, they are hard to come by at the moment of uploading this video, as the ghost is behind that P Bandai wall, and the skull heart I have here hasn't been reissued as of late. When deciding between the two, ultimately, you'll have to consider which accessories you care about that are exclusive to each other, or maybe what color scheme you like more. Personally, if I am to pick between the two, I'd be more inclined to the ghost just because of the butterfly busters. But I do really like the skull heart's color scheme more. Good thing I have both. So that's it for the review. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up. And if you didn't, give it a down and let us know why in the comment sections. Consider subscribing if you like what we do and don't forget to ring the notification bell so you won't miss a video. Join us again next time for another Backlog Kids Review.